to that. Yeah, I'll, I'll look it up later in the um, cause that, that's the King James back there. Let's see what and, and that's what you want to you want to find them when you're doing that. I know a lot of the King James versions they're, they're not translations. They're just copies of a, a, a Latin Vulgate or something mm -hmm. else. So that's what you, you want the original Hebrew language. So that's what you want to look for also. See what okay. type of translation it is. And sometimes, like when I have a, my uh, Bible from Poland, that I like, you know, because that's the first thing I was doing. I was first in comparing if it's, you know, the words might be used a little bit different because newer translations may be more understandable to us. But the sense should be coming the same. The, yeah. sense, the scripture should be coming up. It's easier. It's like you don't have to figure it out. Some of those words, die, D, or whatever, I cannot pronounce TH. So. Yeah. So it's really <laughs> hard for me to read those other ones. But the thing is that I always look, they had like little references in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And what, like, if I saw a little, the word used that I wouldn't really use in that place, and you go in the bottom and you read the references, and it's like, yeah, because it says, like, that's what it means. Mm -hmm. So it's like the word when you just read it, but then you read an explanation, it's like, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, so you have to, because a lot in those, that Polish, there was a Catholic translation, they would say, we not to know, we not to know. We might understand as, or might understand as they say, no, we no. don't have, you know, gray area. It's, we want to know yes or no, true, not true, but no, maybe, you know, mystery. It's no mystery, yeah. it's <laughs> revealed. So I didn't like it, like, oh, they say, they, you know, so, but that's just, just to, you know. Sometimes from the references, the truth comes out, you know? Mm -hmm. When you read the references, it's like, yeah. It's just yeah. Not understood. Oh, that's, that's pretty neat. <laughs> okay. Okay, the next one was um, slavery, uh, the Bible stance. And um, here in 2007, I found in, in one of our, um, you saw our journals, Watchtower and Awake, those are the common journals that, that we leave with the public. But in the July 2007 a week there, there was a, a question that came there so it must came from the public mm -hmm. asking what was the Bible stand by please forgive the, the shadow huh? oh, okay. it's <laughs> but the, the Bible's viewpoint of, of slavery in like I think that was July it no. might even be it's July 2011 it's actually yeah July 2011 at the bottom it must be July 1st, 2011. I don't see it there. Is it 07 at the bottom? I, I just saw it. Usually it should be, yeah. I'm just trying About to. About the front. Oh, right there. Oh, 7 right. 11. Yeah, yeah so. Okay. So if, if you'd if you like to read that for us, Mike. Okay. You go by Mike or you want Mike? Oh, Mike is fine. Okay. Um, and then we can look at the scriptures as you find, because some of it gives the scriptures that follow. Okay. Does, does the Bible condone slavery? <clears throat> Love of a neighbor is one of the fundamental teachings of the Bible. Love, however, is diametrically opposed to the concept of oppressive slavery. Hence, some people are puzzled by the mention of slavery in the Bible. In ancient times, God allowed his people to own slaves. Even in the days of the apostles, some Christians were slave owners and some were slaves. Does this mean that the Bible condones oppressive slavery? Let me read that again to myself. By the time the Bible began to be written, humans had already established social structures and economic systems that conflicted with godly principles. While some of the practices involved were condemned in his writing law uh, con <coughs> condemned in writing law God chose to tolerate others such as slavery regarding to the social structure of the ancient nation of Israel the international standard Bible encyclopedia states it was meant to function as a brotherhood in which ideally there were no poor and there was no exploitation of widows 
waifs or orphans. Hence, more than simply allowing an already established social and economic structure, God's law regulated slavery so that if practiced, slaves would be treated in a humane and living manner. Slavery in, the, in, in Bible history. Consider the follow, following regulations included in the law given through Moses. Kidnapping a man and then selling him was punishable by death. However, if despite all the provisions made to prevent poverty, an Israelite found himself deeply in debt, perhaps as a result of poor management, he could sell himself as a slave. In some cases, he might even be able to earn a surplus by which he could redeem himself. This was not the oppressive kind of slavery that has been common in many lands through the ages. <clears throat> Leviticus 25:39, 40 says, In case your brother grows poor alongside you and he has to sell himself to you, you must not use him as a worker in a slavish, slavish service. He should, he should prove to be with you himself to you. You must not use him as a uh, he should prove to be with you like a hired laborer, like a settler. So this was a loving provision to care for Israel's poorest. A person found guilty of stealing who was unable to make full restitution according to the law could be sold as a slave and in, in this way pay off his debt. When he had worked off the debt, he could go free. Cruel and abusive slavery was not allowed under God's law to Israel. While masters were allowed to discipline their slaves, excess, excesses were forbidden. A slave killed by his master was to be avenged. If a slave was maimed, losing a tooth or an eye, he was set free. The maximum time that any Israelite would have to serve as a slave was six years. Hebrew slaves were set free in the seventh year of their service. The law demanded that every 50 years of Israelite slaves were to be set free nationwide, regardless of how long the individual had been a slave. When a slave was released, the master was required to be generous towards him. Deuteronomy says, in case you should send him out <coughs> from you as one set free, you must not send him out empty handed. You should surely equip him with something from your flock and your threshing floor and your oil and wine press. Later in the days of Jesus and his apostles, slavery was an enriched <coughs> and drenched practice in the Roman Empire. As Christianity spread, the inevitability that individuals who were slaves and others who were slave owners could come in contact with the good news and become Christians. Neither Jesus Christ himself nor his apostles preached a gospel of social liberation as if trying to reform the existing system. Rather, both slaves and slave owners were admonished <coughs> to love one another as spiritual brothers. As is the case with every Bible-related question, the issue of slavery must be considered in context. A careful examination of the scriptures reveals that God deplores the mistreatment of humans. Such an examination also reveals that the kind of slavery practiced by God, God's people in the Bible, is not the cruel or an abusive slavery that is envisioned by most people today. The Bible shows that God will deliver us from, from all forms of slavery in due time then all mankind will enjoy the true freedom. Look at a scripture in, in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Do, do you mind if I hold on to this? That's, that's when you, I think, please forgive my, <laughs> my, my back. It's going it's out. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, this, this is a principle combined with that. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and in verse 4. That, that talks about describe Almighty God. 
actually a song that Moses and the Israelites sing. You read that, like 32 4. For the rock perfect is his uh, <coughs> activity, for all his ways are just justice, a God of faithfulness with whom there is no injustice. Righteous and upright is he. That, that, that's what we've come to know through, through studying the Bible, getting to know Almighty God better and his purposes. And uh, you might want to put your marker there because when we get done, we're going we to read verse 5 and see what, what, what has been the cause of a lot of stuff. And, 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 and Almighty God just. He, he permits it for a time period, but uh, certainly you, you see how he's going to have to intervene. Um, Mark, do you have that scripture that you were researching on, written, that we were reading about that slave that he was beaten, but if he stayed only two days, which one was it? I don't know if that was a, uh, yeah, because that, that was in there. It was in there too. Because that, that's that's what I was I was thinking. Because yeah, because I thought. Um, yeah. It, it was saying you know, mm -hmm. if he was killed, it was to be avenged, or if he lost an eye or a tooth. Mm -hmm. But I mean, beating him to where he couldn't walk for two it days. Is, yeah, and that's what I. Mm -hmm. Can I see the Because I'd like that. to go there. Um, okay. that that was uh, Exodus twenty. Exodus. Oh, okay. Exodus. Yeah. Twenty one. Yeah. Twenty. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I really appreciate that research because it's like, you know, when we go and look back for the, the time, right. at the time. So we know that Israelites, they came from the slavery. They were in slavery, they were abused. Masters were abusing them. Mm -hmm. You know, so they the, the, what they knew, what they knew was was the harsh treatment that they received. Yeah. So then, when they exodus and they go to the land, they see now understanding why Jehovah is teaching them to not do what others what you learn. Yeah. You have to treat the slave different. It has to be different. But why about slaves? Because usually at that time and even now, you know. When, when one nation overpower another, the people who are left, they, they were becoming their slaves. They were working for them. So they could keep them as the slaves or they could sell them. Now, if somebody um, has a farm or a means of uh, needing employees, like in our, in our time, if they need employees, they could have their own, they could have higher work, and that's what they had different one. They had a higher work, so somebody could come. Like now, we go and employ ourselves. You know, we sometimes we have the contract that we're going to work for them for how long. You know, what wages they're going to pay us. But we just, you know, going to do our work. So they had this kind of workers. But if they needed more, they could buy more workers. So the slaves, like let's say from the wars, you could go. Some they didn't need them. They win the war, so you could. On the market, you can actually go and buy. Not like, you know, we probably thinking slavery as maybe the one that it's more known to us, the, 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 uh, our eras. But that we're talking back, you know, when, when the people, when they were inviting, you know, they, were, they, they were owning those people. So they were slaves that they could sell them. And I like how it was saying that you were reading how um, the person was, could sell themselves to slavery. 